Law nerds of the chat, we have a verdict on day 10 in the State versus Hannah Gutierrez read in like two hours of deliberation. I would have been live streaming sooner, but I have to pick up my kid. This verdict came in very fast, and that is normally not a good thing for the defendant. Thank you, chat, for no spoilers. I know we are just a few minutes behind live court. I appreciate all of you. We're going to go to live court. We're not going to even roll the intro because um, there's no time for it. Literally just picked up my kid from band practice. Let's go. <laughs> Verdict watch is over. Verdict is in. We are going to live court. This defendant had left court, I think, confident that this verdict wasn't coming in today. Lawnards, it's so good to see you. We'll discuss everything that happens in a minute. We're just gonna roll. All right. This was a fast, just a right. fast ladies, verdict ladies on this case. The jury through the four person, have you reached a verdict? Yeah. I'm gonna pause this and bump the sound real quick. Um, sound bumped. Let's go. All right, let me see the verdict. For all of you that that raced here with me, thank you. I appreciate you. The judge is going to check the verdict forms to make sure there's no anomalies. Remember in Depp v. Heard, when they checked the verdict forms and had to send them back? This jury also asked a very interesting question. I put that in your app in the messages section. We'll talk about that in the app soon. Waiting for a verdict can be very, very very tense, but a fast verdict is bad generally for the defense. I wouldn't be surprised if the jury splits this verdict, like I said at the end of my earlier stream, the jury very well may split the verdict one and one. We'll see what they do. I've tried to avoid spoilers, but your honor, I know we're behind real time. All right, so let me repeat. So I'm gonna skip you checking the verdict. It was very fast. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, through the four persons. This took like two hours. Yes. All right. And do you wish to read the verdicts? Sure. Okay. I would start Wait. with uh, count one. The four person has to read the verdict? Both of them. Will the defendant please stand? I. Not every jurisdiction makes the defendant stand for a verdict. I think it's appropriate, especially on a case this serious. I know you guys feel nervous. Take a breath. They're going to read this verdict. It's going to be defendant Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. Guilty on count one of involve. We find the defendant Hannah Gutierrez not guilty of tampering with evidence as and charged in count two. Not guilty right, on the you tampering. Did, you didn't let me get those forms, retrieve those forms from you. I'm going to do what's called polling the jury. She's going to ask I'm each going of them. Put on the record is that this is your individual. What just verdict. happened? Okay. Hannah Gutierrez so was found guilty the in the back. of involuntary Resist manslaughter. Your, uh, verdict. Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes, sir. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Okay, thank you. All right, so you've completed your service. Um, thank you so much for um, being here. It was a, it was a long uh, trial. Uh, people may want to talk to you. Um, you know, this has been pretty much a lot of publicity yep. and you don't have to. OK, so you can just simply say do not do not wish to talk and move on. And if anybody bothers you, we really try to protect your privacy. If anybody bothers you, simply call um, uh, my division and I will um, answer all questions and, uh, after we finish after we finish do. this. But you also may talk. OK, if you so want to, it's entirely up to you. OK. Um, all right, so uh, I, I, you can escort them out. All right. The jury's going to be escorted from the courtroom. Thank I'm going to zoom, zoom. Right. They're right. going to have to figure out now if this defendant's going to be remanded into custody. They're going to have to set a sentencing date. She is facing 18 months in state prison. And if you all are feeling kind of sad, it is a sad case all the way around. We're going to zoom, zoom to real time. All right, you may be seated. We are not done in court yet. We are not all done right, in court yet seated. at all. There are friends and family of Helena Hutchins, the deceased, in this court. All right. Is there anything that the uh, state's requesting based upon the uh, verdict? 
probably remand. We would request that Ms. Gutierrez be taken into custody. Mr. Bowles? The state's requesting remand into custody. Mr. Bowles is going to have to argue that his client should stay out of custody. We would request uh, under, uh, pull up the rule, Your Honor. Sir, you should have had that rule when you knew this verdict was this fast. You should have had it pulled up. You got our rule 5402, uh, release pending sentencing uh, in this court's discretion under the same conditions or other conditions as this court would uh, deem necessary. Ms. Gutierrez has been on uh, conditions. She has not violated those conditions. She has voluntarily appeared at all court proceedings. Um, Your Honor, I would request this court to continue conditions or whatever conditions this court would have. He's release. asking to continue release. Right, thank you. I'm going Natalie to remand you. And the reason why I'm going to remand you is you are now Natalie Lawyerchick. Good to see you. Um, I don't know who the blonde woman is. I don't know if that's Hannah's mother, but Hannah is getting remanded into custody. I imagine the woman that looks like she's about to burst into tears is in fact her mother. The court is remanding her into custody. I'm actually a little surprised by that. Um, so she is going to be handcuffed in court and taken into the back and held in jail until her sentencing. I'm surprised by that. All right, thank you. I'm going to remand you, and the reason why I'm going to remand you is you are now convicted. And so, um, and this is a death. It's an, uh, uh, a criminal negligence, but it's still a death. And so, uh, deputies, you're going to take her into custody, and we will set a sentencing date. What is the best... Uh, what do, what do we want to look like on that? And we need an order of remand. Do we? Yeah. If cap, court feels very casual to you, uh, I understand that. Uh, in terms of the sentencing date? Yes. At, 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 at the court's convenience. She's we'll going to take off her jewelry and her um, earrings? There are two weeks in May that I'm unavailable. Those are the last two weeks of May. All right. Mr. Bowles. You are as soon as... Uh, this court Fourth this whip. All right, so, uh, sir, why do you need to look up the criminal rules on your phone? They're asking for sentencing in May, which means she will be in custody until that time. Do you have any conflict like that? She said May. Do you have any conflict? I don't know uh, for sure, Your Honor, that I can. I do have other trials, but I think mid May. Well, I can do it sooner. Okay. I just wonder if you had any conflicts along the way. I doesn't look like mid-May, Your Honor. I, I do. I don't I'm trying to move me this. out of the way, and I'm not uh, being successful. I'm sorry, not understanding. Do you have okay? We're in March. Do you have? Do you have? Or do you have time before May? We have time in April. Okay. Sure. All right. Okay. All right. Anything else before the court? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. We're in recess. And that's it. Yep. Guilty, handcuffed, jewelry off, into custody. Her lawyers are going to tell her, I'm sure, we're going to talk to you. We're going to be in touch with you tonight. Take a deep breath. Um, you're going to be okay. It looks like she's saying goodbye to family in court. I'm surprised that she didn't give her counsel her earrings. Um, I'm actually a bit surprised that the judge remanded her into custody. I. It is a death case but it is an involuntary manslaughter. I thought we would, uh, I thought we would see her remain, uh, remain out of custody on her own recognizance or on the conditions that she's on until, um, until sentencing. I imagine the blonde woman in the white, uh, cardigan is her mother. She looked absolutely livid. I don't know if the defense didn't prepare um, Hannah's family for what was going to happen. But for those of you just coming in, we are going to uh, replay the sentencing real quick or replay the verdict real quick. Um, and then I will answer all of your questions because the verdict is in, the defendant has been remanded. Uh, the verdict came in very, very quickly today. So we will do uh, one more pass at the, the jury four person reading the verdict which is a surprise to me not the court clerk not the judge 
the jury four person read the verdict and we will um we'll then have a conversation about what alec baldwin's lawyers are thinking with how fast that verdict was all right let's go back to oh emily boost the audio the audio is boosted let's go back to the court reading this verdict um once the court reads it on the record did i stop at the right place no the judge is reviewing the forms this was earlier all right let's get back to the judge reading the verdict i stopped at the wrong spot the same conditions nope it went so fast we've got to back up did i do that smoothly no not at all but we're live streaming live court live court can be weird so i'm surprised it came back this this fast honestly gentlemen of the jury through the four person have you reached a verdict yes all right and do you wish to read the verdicts sure okay i would start with uh count one oh. okay you have both of them will the defendant please stand shocked by the way shocked that the four person reads the verdict let's do the verdict one more time Find the defendant Hannah Gutierrez guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. We find the defendant Hannah Gutierrez not guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in count two. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Let me get those forms, retrieve those forms from you. I'm going to do what's called polling the jury. What I need to put on the record is that this is your individual verdict. Okay. The judge asks each. So each I'm going to start with the juror. gentleman in the back. Is this your uh, verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes, Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Sir, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Ma'am, is this your verdict? Yes. Ma'am, is this your verdict? Okay, thank you. This jury was right, very so you sure. Your service. Um, thank you so much for um, being here. It was, it was a long uh, trial. Uh, people may want to talk to you. Um, you know, this has been pretty much a lot of publicity and you don't have to. OK, so you can just simply say, do not, do not wish to talk and move on. And if anybody bothers you, we really try to protect your privacy. If anybody bothers you, simply call um, uh, my division and um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, figure out what to do. But you also may talk. OK, so it's entirely up to you. OK. Um, all right, so uh, I, I, you can escort them out. Yes, sir. All right. Thank All you. Right. The jury is leaving right. the courtroom. I'm going to zoom, zoom to them arguing for remand. I don't know if we need to do that one more time, but we will do that one more time. It's requesting based upon the uh, verdict. We would request that Ms. Gutierrez be taken into custody. Mr. Bowles? He should have been prepared no, for this request. We request uh, under... I'm surprised that he was not prepared yeah, for this with how fast this was. Two, uh, release pending sentencing uh, in this court's discretion under the same conditions or other conditions as this court would uh, deem necessary. Ms. Gutierrez has been on uh, conditions. She has not violated those conditions. She has voluntarily appeared at all court proceedings. Um, Your Honor, I would request this court to continue conditions or whatever conditions this court would, would have on release. All right, thank you. I'm going to remand you, and the reason why I'm going to remand you is you are now convicted. And so, um, and this is a death. It's an, uh, uh, a criminal negligence, but it's still a death. And so, uh, deputies, you're going to Take her into custody, and we will set a sentencing date. What is the best? Uh, what do, What do we want to look like on that? And we need an order of remand, do we? Okay. Yes, Your Honor, you do need an order of remand if you are remanding uh, the defendant into custody. Nobody uh, in was ready. Yes, at, 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 at the court's convenience. Nobody was ready we'll for this normal. sentence to be this fast. Um, I don't think, or for this verdict to be this fast. Those are the last two weeks of May. All right, Mr. Bowles. 
Your Honor, as soon as uh, this court has time, we will be available. All right, so uh, do you have any conflict like that? She said May. Do you have any conflict? I don't know uh, for sure, Your Honor, that I can. I do have other trials, but I think mid May. Well, I can do it sooner. Okay. I just wondered if you had any conflicts along the way. I doesn't look like midnight, Your Honor. I, I do. I don't think I have any conflicts. Well, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not understanding. Do you have? Okay, we're in one. Yes, she's just been convicted. She's just been remanded into custody, and they're sitting here being like, "Your Honor, I don't know. Um, does the third week of May look good?" That's how court is. That is how court it. That is exactly how court is. That is exactly how court is. The defendant is like, what is even happening? And the lawyers are like, it's, you know, literally a Wednesday. Do you have, do you have, do you have time before me? We have time in April. Okay, sure. All right, okay. All right, anything else before the court? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. We're in a recess. And that is it. That is the end of court today. We're gonna to talk about what just happened and I'm gonna sit here with you guys and answer all of your questions. Day 10, State versus Hannah Gutierrez Reed. The jury deliberated for two hours and a little bit if they didn't break for lunch and came back with a guilty verdict on the involuntary manslaughter and a not guilty verdict on the tampering with evidence which does not surprise me at all that they split the verdict in that way. The tampering charge was not a good charge. I don't think there's enough evidence to really support it, and I'm not surprised that that's what the jury did. But it seems that they felt very, very strongly that Hannah Gutierrez is responsible for checking the weapons on the set of Rust and that she did not do that job well she did that job recklessly, negligently, and did so causing a death, which is how they got to the guilty verdict on that involuntary manslaughter. So you all have a ton of questions, um, and we're going to spend some time together answering them all. Why? Well, I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. We're going to we're going to release a podcast tomorrow, and we're going to talk about that then. But y'all have questions about Alec Baldwin, if there's going to be an appeal, and all of the rest of it. We're going to spend some time just answering questions. Let's do that now. Lonards. Lady Lucifera asked if she gets 18 months, will she only serve 80% of that? Um, it, it could be less than that, depending on New Mexico and some states especially with an invol, you might actually get a different percentage, less than 80%. I don't know if she's going to get 18 months. Um, she will probably get some amount of custody time. I don't know if she's going to get a full 18 months of custody time. She has no priors. This was involuntary. This is a recklessness case. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if she'll get the full, full uh, 18 months, but we'll see. Emily, what is your reading on this verdict? I understand. I understand how the jury got there. I think there's. I think there's uh, evidence to support that. So, can you agree with the verdict, but not with the immediate remand? Sure. I think so. I I'm surprised by the remand. Yes, someone died, but this defendant has been out of custody. But now that she's been convicted, it's very different. There is a very real possibility um, that she could decide to uh, to to not stay in new mexico she doesn't live in new mexico she's a resident of arizona i believe so there are concerns for the court um in not having her remanded and i i get that too at the end of the day this indicates to me that the court is probably going to uh sentence her to some amount of custody and if she is sentenced to some amount of custody this will all credit that she has not spent time in custody on this case so the jury was not persuaded by what everybody else's wrong was i th think they were most persuaded by the fact that she is the one responsible for checking the bullets in the gun question apart from alec is there anyone else to be charged dave hall's pled to a misdemeanor 
Sarah Zachary, who is props, I don't know if is as culpable as the rest of them, but got an immunity deal. Seth Kinney didn't even get an immunity deal. They saw nothing to charge him with. So is there anything else left in the criminal realm other than Baldwin? No, there's no one else left to charge from this set. There are a ton of civil lawsuits. And this is a case that's going to absolutely change um, the way people operate on set. And I hope that for anyone that works on a set or works in a job that's unsafe, that this case emboldens you to say, no, that's gonna be my responsibility. I don't have time to do my job well. No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. Um, let's see. Kylie says a juror is being interviewed by Alex. Is that over on Twitter? We'll go look. Um, if and Miguelina, will you keep a look and see if anybody's doing press conferences? I imagine that the lawyers aren't doing press conferences, but let me go look um and see if, where Alec has put that and see if it's up on uh either News Nation or on Twitter. It looks like it's on uh Twitter. So I will pull that up in just a second and we will watch that together. I just have to judge my judge my screen a little bit to do that. But I hope that this case um, reminds people that when it is ultimately your responsibility, even when it is hard, you have the power to say, what I'm not going to do is something that puts me in the jeopardy that Hannah Gutierrez Reed is in. She had the responsibility here. She was in a very difficult working environment but she had the responsibility here. So at the end of the day, that responsibility came knocking for her. She was responsible for the guns. And if she couldn't do her job safely, I don't think she realized how much she needed to put her foot down and say no. And I hope that that reminds all of us that when we are in those untenable work environments, that at the end of the day, it falls on us. And we have to say no and we have to raise uh the alarm and sometimes when it is tough we have to walk away and that is that is a very very difficult thing to do so let's see verdict i mean it closed this closed the loop for all of us um mike thank you for the the member chat and a huge thank you to the moderators the moderators have ridden day in and day out for 10 days in this incredible community with you all and a huge thank you to them they have been trading off life stuff and moderation stuff to make sure that we always have people in the chat mostly to help you guys find what you need especially for the new law nerds melanie said i would think most people in new mexico probably know about gun safety and what makes sense about safety because at the end of the day it was her job michael thank you for the gifts uh, Brittany said, I'm anxious and I'm not on trial. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, I, ner like nervous. It's weird, isn't it? Rosa, thank you for the memberships. Thanks for the law nerd alert. Got here so speedy. I would have been here faster, but it worked out. It was fine. I had to drive safe. My kid was in the car. I can't, I can't drive recklessly. <laughs> I've got a 16 year old. I don't want him to do what I do. Um, I tagged you on Twitter on this. The alert came in as I was pulling into my kid's school to pick him up for uh, from band practice today because Dr. B is not home from teaching yet. Um, Jamie, gifted to memberships, thank you. Uh, I'm just wait. I'm just waiting for my 16 year old to be able to bring himself home. Um, I am at the same place as the jury. That was my feelings after closing arguments. I get it. What does this mean for Baldwin? Huge question. What does this mean for Baldwin? Um, I think his lawyers are probably nervous, right? I think his lawyers are probably nervous about this verdict. And I, the theories are a little bit different. Um, let me send a message to my, my, um, producer real quick. Um, okay. I think that he has to be nervous because they asked that question about intervening cause. And I wonder if they were thinking that Alec was the intervening cause. So we're going to pull up the reporting here. Let me share my screen real quick. And we're going to go continue to go through questions. Don't you worry. We're going to still go through questions. 
but we're going to pull up this jury question real quick. There we go. Um, this is from Alex Caparello. Jury has a question about instruction 20 language, second paragraph highlighted portion. The attorney teams and judge decided there wasn't anything they can do to help the jury decipher it. Yeah, they can't sway them one way or the other, right? They have to just, um, they have to just, they have to just tell them you have to figure it out. This is why lawyers need to be very clear about the jury instructions in closing because they're not allowed to really help them. Like these are not, they can't answer these questions. Uh, so the question in the instruction is if you find negligence of a person other than the defendant was the only significant cause of death or this was their question constitutes an intervening cause that breaks the foreseeable chain of events then the defendant is not guilty of the offense of involuntary manslaughter you have to wonder if this jury was thinking about baldwin pulling the trigger as an intervening cause which means this jury was ready to this is speculation which could mean that this jury was already ready to convict Baldwin and he wasn't the one on trial here. That has to be something that Baldwin's lawyers are keeping an eye on. I know the max sentence, what's the minimum sentence? The minimum sentence in this case is probation. Emily, if you would have stayed on the stream a few more minutes, you would have seen Thel Reed talking to Bowles. I can go pull up the court stream. The stream I was on cut, but I can pull up the, um, the court TV stream and see what was happening in court afterwards. We can, we're gonna go look at that um, juror interview in just a moment, but I can do that in a second. That's not a worry. So we can we can do that, but I wanna pull up Alex's interview with the, um, with the juror in just a moment as we get to some of this. So what does this mean for Baldwin? It's gotta make Baldwin a bit nervous, but the state's armorer expert said that if Baldwin had checked the gun, that the armor would have had to check it again. I think what the state will focus on after how the evidence played out in this trial for Baldwin is the reckless use of the firearm, pointing it at a person and pulling the trigger. I think they should focus on the reckless use of a firearm. It's easier to understand. No one should ever do it, not on a movie set, not anywhere. And all the gun safety experts are going to say, you don't point a weapon at something you don't wanna destroy. I don't give a shit if you're on a movie set. I don't care if somebody's told you it's a cold gun. There are movie magic cheats, and we heard a witness talking about this. Movie magic cheats where it looks like it's down the barrel of the lens, but it's slightly off the barrel of the lens. Or if you are putting a gun down the barrel of the lens, you are using a gun that is not capable of firing with nothing in it. Not pointing it at the cinematographer and pulling the trigger. They should focus on involuntary manslaughter based on the unlawful act of the negligent use of a firearm for Baldwin. But it is not good for him. Could, could he try to negotiate a plea deal? I don't think this prosecution team wants to play with Baldwin. I think they've been wanting to try Baldwin since, since all of this went down. And I think it tainted their decision to give Dave Halls a plea deal. Was their decision to get Halls to testify against Baldwin? Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree absolutely think that's what they did so what does this mean for baldwin um that he's going to be real nervous just got the app notification what's the verdict uh guilty not guilty natalie lawyer trick wow that was super fast natalie if you are still in the chat a good to see you friend b have you ever seen a not guilty verdict come back that fast i've generally only seen guilties come back that fast not guilties tend to take a little bit more time um chatting I've seen more questions in the chat. How much time is she looking at? 18 months, probation to 18 months. I understand negligent handling, but involuntary manslaughter. If they found that she negligently handled the firearm, it is a predicate for the involuntary manslaughter. That's how they got there because somebody did die. Bella Marie taking an LSAT study break, sad case. It is a sad case. And that's why some of you feel really heavy. Her being convicted doesn't change um, the fact that this is a sad case, that this was completely avoidable. Is it normal to be remanded so quickly? It depends on the jurisdiction, the judge, and the charge. 
If you are out of custody and you were convicted of killing someone, it is not unusual. This is an invol, so I wasn't sure if that's what the judge would do. I think it's very interesting that SK is in the courtroom for the verdict. Um, Seth Kinney, I didn't see him in there, but we'll go back to court. Heart hurts for her, but it's the right verdict. This, it sucks all the way around. It was avoidable. The thing is, it was avoidable by her too. She wasn't the only one that could have avoided this here, but she was the main one who could have avoided this here by checking, no matter what fuckery Baldwin got up to, he couldn't have killed someone if, in this way, if there was not a live round in the gun. Um, this is breaking my heart. She isn't a risk to the community. I don't think she deserves jail time. And Ella, she will probably get some jail time. Um, maybe not a ton, but she will probably get some. Nefertiti said, I actually feel bad for her. And I know Baldwin is just going to throw her under the bus to save his own butt. I, I have empathy for her too. Absolutely. I didn't think this would make me cry like this. I get, I get it. Um, this feels so yucky to me watching her go into custody with her superiors and others getting plea deals and immunity deals. Yeah. I hate the Dave Hall's plea deal. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I still don't like it. She could have taken a plea deal. She chose not to. Um, I believe he is pivoting from a state law to criminal defense. Can't get his web to, website to load, but Runkle showed it. That's the defense attorney. When you practice regularly, those code sections about remand and stuff are generally kind of top of mind. What's the minimum here? She could get probation. She could get time served. She could get time served. She could go in for custody from now till sentencing. What are we in March? If they sentence her at the end of April or May and get a month or two of time served and then formal felony probation for three years, no weapons, things like that. Absolutely could. Samantha, any chance she'll testify at the Baldwin trial? If her appeal is pending, um, it would be odd to me. But could she? Yes. I mean, I don't know if she will. I don't know if her lawyers will want her to. But could she? I mean, if there's no appeal pending, um, then she could. Let me, that should be right. No. Sorry, I'm texting. It's a busy night, y'all. It is a busy, busy night. Um, she was remanded. There's zero chance she's getting probation. She could get time served in probation. It's po I mean, it's possible. I don't think this judge is feeling that. I would feel all right with a, let's see, with that sentence, uh, be in jail until sentencing probation, never touching a gun again. Question, won't they need to do a pre-sentence report? They didn't even say anything about a pre-sentence report. EDB, uh, could authorities take Baldwin's passport just in case? They probably already have. Um, I imagine there's already conditions on Baldwin. Good, bad, or no significance for the Baldwin trial? Um, I think it will make him more nervous. I don't think it's particularly good or bad because the case against him is different, whatever the armorer does. I think his lawyers, if the armorer was found not to be at fault, would have more to say. It looks like her attorneys are um, are speaking to Court TV and News Nation cameras. So I'm going to go pull up Court TV and see if we can find those interviews now because I am interested to see the post-court... Um, God, did they end their stream? Court TV, what did you do? They did end their stream. Um, but their cameras are sitting out there while these interviews are happening. Let's see if News Nation is still live for these real quick. Um, because I see their microphone there too. If not, we're going to have to go to Twitter to get these interviews in chunks. No, nobody's still live. I mean, I'm still live. I'm sure other others are still live, but these are clips coming to us from Twitter. All right. I, I guess we do what we have to do um, because everybody shut down their cameras before there was a press conference. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, We'll hope for the best. This will probably be on, uh, I would imagine, News Nation tonight. This is coming to us from uh, News Nation on Twitter from reporter Alex Caparelli. I hope I pronounced that right. I might not have. It's been a day. All right, let's do this. There we go. Hopefully the sound is good. I'm going to gain up the sound as much as I can. Let me do that real quick because streaming, this is why I don't stream breaking news. It's not easy as it turns out. 
Um, I don't have JB's stream center. <laughs> I need to make one. My husband. No, you're not me. Yes, I am. Uh, we're obviously disappointed in the verdict, but we are disappointed in a lot of things that happened in that courtroom. We plan to appeal. We believe we've got a number of issues that we will be asserting. We obviously respect the jury's decision, but we uh, have a lot of work to do, and we will be doing on this appeal. Here's what he indicated, and I should have swooped. I'm going to start back from the beginning again. I totally should have swooped. Of course he's talking about appeal. I don't know if he's the appellate counsel. Um, generally, litigators don't also do appeals, but we'll see. All right, defense counsel press conference. Uh, we're obviously disappointed in the verdict. But we are disappointed in a lot of things that happened in that courtroom. We plan to appeal. We believe we've got a number of issues that we will be asserting. We obviously respect the jury's decision, but we uh, have a lot of work to do. And we will be doing on this appeal. He did indicate he was appellate counsel saying we have a lot of work to do on this appeal. Yes, they might have appellate counsel in their firm. Um, yes, there is a lot of work to do. I do think the prosecution said things in closing that were outside of evidence. I don't know if it would have mattered. It'll come up in appeal. This appellate record is going to be a mess because this transcript is a mess because the court didn't rule on half the objections. And if you don't object to it and the court doesn't rule on it, you can't appeal based on it. What, are, what the things that happened in the courtroom that you're disappointed in? Can you elaborate? Um, My client getting elaborate on that. My client getting convicted. He says, I won't elaborate but on that it. That will be filed in our appellate briefs. What was your sense? Did you feel like the, the, about the, the, uh, the, the, the silverback primers as opposed to the, the patina? What was your sense about uh, the government in, you know, in that? Uh, my sense was the evidence wasn't sufficient to convict. I disagree. And it was a lot of guesswork and a lot of speculation. But again, the jury rendered its verdict and we'll be appealing that. Circumstantial evidence and guesswork are two different things. There is circumstantial evidence. However, I will point out that Hannah said she loaded this gun in her police interviews. She said she loaded the gun in her interviews. She said she um, knew that there could be safety risks on set and that was her job. Her police interviews, I think, are probably what the jury found the most persuasive. I know it's what I found the most persuasive. Chat. What do you think? Did did were her own interviews one of the most persuasive pieces of evidence to you in this case? Did you did you feel like the the jury was kind of you know the you know the, the Alec Baldwin uh, part of it? Is it uh, you know do you feel like the government actually was was fair? Government was not fair, absolutely not fair, and that will be part of our appeal. Um, I think everybody saw what happened in that court. We'll be addressing. I think everybody saw what happened in that courtroom. We'll be addressing it. There were moments, sir. Uh, you were part of some of those moments. So. Uh, what was your reaction to the not guilty verdict? I think that was the right verdict. That was the stupidest charge ever. And they just wanted to say cocaine and Hannah in the same sentence. And I don't like it. It feels heavy handed. I can't. Why did your client decide not to testify? That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I wonder still if they thought Hannah might testify. And that's why we heard that closing arguments would be on Thursday. It would give it a whole day for her to testify. And then she decided not to her testifying would not have helped her. Her not speaking to the police is the only thing really that would have helped her in this case. We're going to go to the other interview with a juror. Um, also coming from Alex from news nation over on the uh the app formerly known as twitter and i'm surprised somebody agreed to talk but hey you never know what have been your overall thoughts about the trial everything you heard um throughout these 10 days pretty much uh, very unsafe conditions and it was obvious i mean there was nothing it's very windy. He said, very unsafe conditions. It's obvious. Yes. <laughs> well, you guys were in there. It was pretty quick that you guys came to a decision. Um, you know, what was the things that you guys 
took into consideration and was the thing that really convinced you guys that she was guilty? It was uh, a lot of the safety issues that she could have paused work, stopped, cleared it all up, and just never did. I deal a lot with safety. Up in, I work in Los I deal a lot with safety. How many of you in the chat deal with safety with your job and felt the way this juror is feeling? I'm going to back up to get to this juror saying I deal a lot with safety um, because I'm very curious to see what this juror has to say. Piece of video, something that the prosecution said that really. Oh, no, I back. Oh, I went too far. Stop, cleared it all up and just never did. I deal a lot with safety. Up then I work in Los Alamos, so I deal a lot with it. And they'd say, you don't stop work, just pause work. Was there uh, a particular? Don't stop work, just pause work is, is what he does in his job. The defense could have known this, depending on how Voidir went, that this juror deals a lot with safety and takes it very seriously. Anyone who takes safety into their hands in their job, I think is going to feel this juror. Uh, Kat in Virginia, very helpful, said Los Alamos equals nukes. Uh, for those of us not local to New Mexico, very helpful information. Witness or a particular moment, a piece of video, something that the prosecution said that really sank in with you? Mm, pretty much is just that all the never did the safety checks. Never check the rounds to pull them out, to look at them, shake them. I mean, if you'd have done that, this wouldn't have happened. Was there any moment that anyone in the jury maybe didn't agree with the guilty verdict? Uh, they had their ideas or their concerns, but after talking it all out, it pretty much, uh, they were convinced. How do you feel about the decision today? I think it was fair. Yep, and it was his verdict. Someone died. I mean, yep. You gotta take responsibility. Ask him about Baldwin. Especially when you're handling weapons and you're in charge of those. That's that's your job. And lack of experience or whatever you want to call it, you took the job. How was this a difficult up? decision for you to come to? The what? Was this a difficult decision for you to come to? Uh, yeah, no. What do you mean? Okay. Well. After hearing everything and then thinking about it, mostly because I deal with a lot in safety, being in Los Alamos and all the things around and being in other jobs that were the same way, especially driving with CDL driver, I, I have to check in my vehicle. Also a CDL driver. So this man not only works with nukes, but is also a CDL driver. So the jury should have known this. The lawyers should have known this about this juror, but I wonder how many other jurors also work in fields where safety is their responsibility. Make sure I'm not going to slam into people or do something like that. That was her job to check those rounds, those firearms. And if no one wanted to pay attention or do that, then she could <laughs> stop the work. Was there how anything the that the defense... He's echoing the testimony from the expert armor, the state's expert armor there that said she can stop the work. The state's expert armor said that and the state's witness today, the director today said she could stop the work. And he's echoing that testimony exactly said that maybe convinced you or made you think that Hannah Gutierrez Reed was actually being scapegoated? No, I don't think so. Do you believe she brought live rounds on set? If she did, she didn't, if she didn't know it and she did, but yeah, we think she did. How much Can of it all did actor reaction? Alec Ball? And now everybody wants to talk to this juror. Do you think she brought rounds on, on set? Yeah. After all, we think we did. Baldwin play a part in your deliberations or any other cast or crew members that were in there? Well, they're, they're going to have their day, his day. So we really didn't take that into. I'm going to back that up because they're asking about Baldwin. He's going to have his day. If she did, 
she didn't if she didn't know it and she did but yeah we think she did how much Can of it all did actor reaction? alec baldwin play a part in your deliberations or any other cast or crew members that were in there well they're they're gonna have their day his day so we really didn't take that into uh, consideration that's so interesting to know i'm so glad they asked about baldwin and others on set they're going to have their day so we didn't take it into consideration the prosecution talked about that in their closing and i think had to talk about it in their closing that baldwin is going to have his day in court it wasn't part of it what was her reaction when the when the decision came down i don't know i didn't see nothing he didn't, didn't see her reaction anything. so i don't know i'll sit in the back <laughs> that's that's about it can you spell your name for us a-L-B-E-R-T-O-S-A-N-C-H-E-Z. Sir, you can say no to. It's okay, Mr. Alberto Sanchez. Sanchez? Yeah. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go to Twitter and see if there are any other um, interviews brought to us on uh, this feed. Let me see if I can see anything else. I'm just going to refresh real quick. Then I'm going to get to answering your questions. And then I'm going to let everybody rest for the night. So, nope, those are the only two I see. I don't see anything else. I'm glad um, that Alex brought those to the Twitter because everybody cut their feeds right afterwards. I'm glad that the prosecution didn't hold some kind of press conference. I kind of hated that at the end of uh, Murdaugh. It felt like a little bit of a weird victory lap, but I did not like that at all. Um, and chat sees that I have invited a guest a guest on to stream who will be here in a minute as we are answering uh, and continue to answer your questions. So we're going to be chatting about the verdict and answering your questions uh, in just a minute. But I knew Peter was streaming and I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt, but I know so many of you have been hopping over there at lunch. And I think Runkle went and hopped over to Alita's stream. Uh, so everybody is streaming. That's just, that's just the way it is. All right, let's get to some more of your questions and hopefully I can answer them. Um, Belinda said in that area, most work with Los Alamos in some way, um, they would be part of safety. Look, if you have a large jury pool um, that works at a nuclear facility, and then you bring them the evidence of the shit show that was this particular set, I imagine those that work at the nuclear plant have very strong feelings about what was happening on this set but also are going to look at every link in the chain responsible for safety and the links in the chain include hannah and if they are all links in the chain at their work they're going to say you know what if this was my work i would be the one sitting in that chair so i make sure it's not me and that's a huge factor when knowing where you're going to trial knowing who your jurors are going to be, knowing the area you're trying the case in is hugely important, hugely important. Could the state offer her a deal at this point to testify against Baldwin? They're not going to. They don't, they don't need her to testify against Baldwin. With all that evidence today, uh, or all that evidence is trial, they don't need her to testify against Baldwin at all. They don't. Good, bad, or no significance. I'm sure we'll be talking about Baldwin more with Peter. I desperately wanted Hannah to be found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, but being remanded feels like too much. Hopefully at her May sentencing, she'll just get time served. The judge will get to decide that. Um, and I'm sure Helena's family, look, I know Hannah's mother was devastated in court. You could see it on her face. I think that is her mother behind her. But Helena also has a mother that's suing Hannah and a son and a husband. Like there is a lot of harm here. Um, and it feels weird when someone like Dave Halls is not really held responsible at all and got probation unsupervised. Like that's part of where for me, it feels unjust. I don't know if that's the same for you. Does the remand tell us anything about sentencing? She's gonna get custody time at at least some point, I would imagine, even if it's just time served. Is that the hotel guy sitting next to her mom? Didn't look like it. I don't know if Anna has a brother. Did Hannah's mom and Helena's friends bicker before they left court? I don't know. Hannah's mom looked very upset. I will say I have been in more than one courthouse and in more than one courtroom where physical fights have broken out between the victim's family and defendant's family. I have had sheriffs involved. I have people have been arrested. Um, it can get very, very tense after a sentencing. 
between the families. Uh, very, very tense. Felony equals no guns again ever, correct? Correct. EDB, correct me if I'm wrong. I have a CCW permit, concealed carry. I know the responsibility it holds. If someone hands me a gun and tells me it's not loaded and I don't check, that's my fault. If I pull the trigger, I should be held accountable. And I think Baldwin will be, but because this was her job, her duty is different than your duty as a CCW carrier. Her job role informs her duty. Uh, Kay Ann, good to see you. Regardless of verdict, I feel like this prosecutor wants to prove she has the biggest dick in the room. I mean, can't say I've never been there. It's fair. And yes, this prosecutor is ready to go after Alec Baldwin. Why does this feel heavy? Because it's heavy. And I think because it doesn't feel just. Chat, we're going we're gonna to take a quick moment and say hello to a friend of ours. It's Peter from Lawyer You Know. Peter. What's up? Good to see you. What's up? It's been a little while. It's like been we've chatted, too. But we haven't seen each other, you know? Uh-oh, I can't hear you. What happened? Did I do something? It looks well, like, like I'm, I'm working, working on mine. mine. All right, I hear you just fine. Hopefully the chat doesn't hear an echo. Miguelina, do you hear an echo? Peter, if you hit um, echo cancellation in your audio on StreamYard, you should be good. Audio, audio it, it is, is checked. checked. I can't hear you now. Oh no. <laughs> All right, now I can hear you. Are we good? I don't know, I just threw your whole stream off. I mean, I can hear you it's great. Okay. I can hear you great too. Miguelina, are we clear on Echo? We shouldn't have Echo. Echo should be gone. Um, sounds great now, perfect. When we come into StreamYard, we just both have to hit um, Echo cancellation on both sides and I think that's what does okay. it. Okay, All right. And then we're clear but I can hear you just great. I don't do this very much. So, I mean, it makes sense that it would mess up when I did it. I don't do it very much either. <laughs> we both are kind of like, I'm really busy. I'm going to stream. I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a pretty wild time, you know, here in the stream world. But what did you think? Were you surprised at all? Is that how you thought it was going? I was not surprised. I thought they were going to split the verdict. I thought that the tampering charge was stupid and reaching and I hated it from the beginning. Um, and I thought with the fatality and the evidence they had that they could go with the involuntary manslaughter, I thought if there was a question and if this verdict had taken longer, I would have been leaning towards them giving her the lesser included to make it kind of equal with what Dave Hall's pled to. But when it came back that quick, I was like, well, that's probably a guilty. Yeah, I mean, usually that's what happens when it's that quick. And there was almost no way she was going to get out of there without at the very best that misdemeanor when they hear. I mean, they, they talked so much about indicting Alec Baldwin and Dave Hall's pleading to that and all these civil cases and all this stuff yeah. going on to where it's like, you can't just let her walk out of here with a not guilty, especially when there's a fatality. And, and I mean, one of the jurors talked about that. I was just like, somebody died. There has to be justice and justice turns into a conviction. And that tampering charge was probably there to split the baby for some compromise. And so they could talk about drugs. They and wanted to talk about so drugs weed. so badly. Yeah. They wanted yeah. to talk about drugs so badly. They really, really wanted to talk about drugs with her, but it was such a, yeah, it was such a reach though. I thought the prosecutor's argument on closing, Hey, this is what the tampering charge is for. Can't test the evidence because they got rid of it was the best argument they had really on that. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. And of course that's what they're going to go with. It's kind of like the spoliation instruction when evidence is destroyed, you know, in a civil case and we talk about, it's probably bad for them. They can get a negative inference. That's yep. why they destroyed the video or whatever it may be. But in this case, it's just so bad because talking about drugs in a negligence case is another form of negligence that they absolutely argued and piled on top of. So, I mean, when, when you talk about that, I think it is kind of tough and that's just so much more prejudicial. So the fact that they had enough just by one person saying she gave me cocaine that I didn't test, I didn't taste, I didn't smell, I didn't give to law enforcement, I threw in the trash. I mean, right. that's tough that that was even charged. It is. It is tough that it was charged. And what's really tough for me is I understand the like, yeah, she's trying to evade getting a drug charge for maybe having drugs in her room. They never tied together that she had it on set, that she had it when she went to the police department. We know the police didn't search her because she full, pulled rounds out of her pockets and put them on the table, but nothing else fell out. Um, of her pockets. Mm -hmm. After the shooting happened, she was in the law enforcement vehicle, in the bathroom with an escort, back in a law enforcement vehicle, then to the interview room. So if she didn't have it on her, is it really evidence of the involuntary manslaughter? And I don't think so. And I think that's why the prosecution mentioned it zero in their rebuttal. Yeah, I, that's, 
I mean, you could see that the whole way that was so weak. Yeah. And especially when you're comparing, like, what does beyond a reasonable doubt look like? And we see how they prove the negligence and the unintentional killing and the involuntary manslaughter compared to how they prove that charge. Exactly. Like, I mean, just comparing the two, you're like, there's no way that can be beyond a reasonable doubt. Exactly. And Peter, what I forgot is that we have a lot of new law nerds in here with the 18,000 people that are chilling. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't know Peter Lawyer, you know, I think most of you probably do. But Peter, I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Let them know where your channel is. Because sure. Peter's been doing lunchtime, like real quick summaries. And it's been pretty incredible because you still have like a law job. <laughs> I, do. I am still a lawyer. Um, I have not stopped doing that. I don't plan to stop doing that because I really like it. Uh, my name is Peter Tregos. I am a primarily civil trial lawyer now. Um, I did some criminal work in the past and still do a very little bit of it. My dad was is a, is a big time criminal defense attorney. So I learned a lot from him. I was a former prosecutor as well. Sir, your For dad was a big time prosecutor too. Yes, yes. State and federal. And so people told me Jason Bowles was a real estate lawyer. And I looked him up. He's a former federal prosecutor. So this guy knows what he's doing. Um, some people like were trying yeah, Peter, to get in. He, he missed a Maybe it was strategy. He missed a lot of objections. That said, oh. feds don't go to trial all that often. It's true. It's true. It's, it's, I mean, it's definitely a different beast and they definitely aren't trying fourth degree felonies. Um, I, I think he was shocked that they immediately took her to jail as well. Um, I was surprised. He wasn't ready for that. He's like pulling out his phone, trying to find the code section. He was not expecting the remand. Honestly, I wasn't expecting the remand. Were you? Either. Yeah. No, I mean, that reminded me of Jesse Smollett where- you know, it's like, we're going to put him in jail for longer than his sentence is even going to end up being. It's just not fair, regardless of what you think about the person or the charges. If they're going to be sitting in jail for longer, their sentence is going to take longer than an appellate process because it's a fourth degree felony. Usually you're let out, especially first time offender, which I think she is. I'm not positive if she has anything else, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Anything else. I don't know if she has anything else. Um, I know they had that insinuation from a civil case that she gave the keys to a, a friend or a boyfriend that was drunk and then he collided on a motorcycle and was killed. But they, I don't think there was, I think there was civil stuff, but I don't think there was any criminal stuff with that. And I don't know if there even could be. So yeah, yeah. it's kind of a, it's kind of a wild one, but chat, this is Peter. We're going to chat just a oh, little yeah. bit more. Trisha Lynn's got a question for you. Trisha, good to see you. Thoughts on the defense gun expert yesterday that was absent from closing argument. Did you notice in closing, he was the only witness that didn't get a slide with a, a, a pause face. Yeah. A couple of things. I don't, I didn't even say this on my stream, but I was thinking about it when I was watching it. Um, sometimes lawyers make the mistake and, and I've worked with lawyers and had cases with lawyers where they've done this, where they make the mistake of being like, you know, my buddy knows a lot about this. My buddy would be awesome. If he comes in this case, I trust him. I know he's going to help us out. He's not going to kill us. We call your buddy and it's like, yeah, but your buddy's not an expert and it's not what he lives in. He may know a lot about guns. The guy's like a financial planner or something and owns a, a financial firm. And it's like, but he owns a lot of guns. He's used a lot of guns. He knows a lot about guns, but it's very different when you're sitting on that witness stand talking about credentials compared to the other weapons experts we've had in this case. It seemed like that, especially when she asked the questions about most of your work is done for Mr. Bowles, right? Which he kind of quibbled about that, but I thought that was kind of interesting and maybe the scenario that played there, but it was something I immediately noticed. And people, sometimes a couple of people in my chat were like, oh, I think he did great. He knows a lot about guns. I'm like, well, you know what? You know who doesn't think he did great? Jason Bowles, because he didn't even mention him in closing argument. Yeah, he was kind of a nightmare witness and it, I think it was better to just ignore him altogether. Um, he seems like a good teacher. He seems like he knows a lot about historical weapons. Not the right witness for this case especially with how good the state's armor expert was. I thought the state's armor expert was really excellent. And this guy was never going to unseat that expert. We didn't have a real battle of the experts in this case because they didn't have any. And then today their defense expert, the director, I would love to know what you thought he added, but I thought he undid some of the testimony from OSHA that was so strong. Yeah. I mean, the guy today, it was weird. The state didn't hit him very hard either. So I, I, I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's like some big shot you don't want to mess with or whatever, but it basically he was like, yeah, the uh, armor and the assistant director should have both, you know, made sure that didn't happen. I was like, how does that help you? I, I kind of felt like all the pointing, the negligence at everybody. I mean, Hannah was as negligent, if not worse than everybody else. So anytime they point something at what Seth Kenny did, what David Halls did, I mean, you have to look at Hannah. She's in the same boat as them. And I think the defense's case should have been the first OSHA guy rest. 
Yep. Let the jury think about that and let's see what happens. The first OSHA guy was great. The second OSHA guy added nothing. The gun guy made them look like a total clown show. And the guy today undid the OSHA guy because he came in with the expertise from the movie industry saying, no, the armor needs to shut down the set if this is a problem and undid that OSHA testimony. And that's what they left the jury with. I don't think there was going to be a single person working in Hollywood as an armorer, as a weapons expert that was going to be like, yeah, what she did was fine. That's Never. why you just go with OSHA who says it's on the bosses, it's on the producers. You know, they removed her duty. This case was all about duty. The state proving it was her duty. In fact, number one, ultimate, the buck should stop with her when it comes to firearms and ammunition. That was what the bulk of their case was about, proving what her duty was. And the defense, OSHA did a good job of saying she couldn't even perform her duty. They created a situation where the duty was removed from her obligation. And therefore, if she didn't have a duty, she can't breach a duty and then just be done there. But you know, it's hard to just call one witness. And the state bear or the defense barely argued it in closing. They barely argued that Hannah was Dave Hall said she was a good armor. Sarah Zachary said she was a good armor. They didn't drop up, drop her dropping the C bomb on Sarah Zachary, which was fine. Sarah Zachary said she was good. Mimi Mitchell said she was good. Uh, the director, Joel Souza, had texted her what a great job she had done. Mm -hmm. All these people saw her doing a great job. And the reason she couldn't do a great job on that day was because of production. But where she runs into problems with that argument is the state standing up there going, uh, the camera crew walked off that day. She had over three hours that morning to check things. Yeah, that was a good point. That was a good point. And she didn't do shit. And yeah. maybe she had a headache. Maybe she was hungover. Maybe she was flirting with Jensen Eccles. We don't know. But what she wasn't doing was double checking the gun because then we ended up with somebody being killed on this set. I think the civil cases are going to be real interesting in all of this. And I would love to talk to you about that in a sec. We have to welcome another guest. We've got Runkle of the Bailey coming in, coming in this afternoon to join us. Runkle, go into your stream yard and hit echo cancellation. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull you up. that off the top this time. We'll just take it off the top. I need a reminder, EDB, what does her being held on remand mean again? She went to jail and they are holding her till she is sentenced. Ian Runkle, Runkle of the Bailey, come on in, say hello to the chat. Let them know where they can find you. Hello, everyone. I'm at uh, Runkle of the Bailey on YouTube. Um, I'll be live in, what, an hour and 15 minutes? But uh, that was that was a fast verdict. <laughs> it was a very fast verdict, um, which you're a defense attorney. Have you ever had a not guilty comeback super, super fast? I When I saw the verdict after that question, I was like, I think that's going to be a guilty because that seemed to me like a holdout question. One person in the room is like, well, I, I, I still want to say not guilty. And then it's like, well, can we just finish this question? So, but yeah, if it was not guilty, um, I mean, there are fast, not guilties if it's just really obvious, but yeah. Not it, not plea. <laughs> Most of those plead <laughs> or most of those go away. Like the prosecutor goes, yeah, we're done. So yeah. my, fa I mean, my fastest, my fastest verdict ever, we thought they were buzzing to take back the evidence and they were buzzing because they went in, picked a four person, did a vote and buzzed. Um, <laughs> and we were like, I haven't even left the court. I haven't even gone to the bathroom yet. Um, but with, with the, very, very few NGs I've had. I've had a couple hungs, but with the very few NGs I've had, they've taken some time and deliberation and work because I think there's always one that's like, yeah, but we're here. The cops arrested we, him. So do you really think they didn't do anything? There's always one who's like, but yeah. would we really be here if they didn't do anything? There's always one. So yeah. it takes a little time on an NG. Yeah, I, I had a quick not guilty that, and like you're saying, they usually plead. So it came in as an ag bat with a deadly weapon. They kept reducing it down, reducing it down, trying to get our guy to plea. Ended up being a simple battery misdemeanor trial because they wouldn't just drop the charges. So we went to trial and it was like an hour and a half. Me and my dad tried. It was like an hour and a half, not guilty. I mean, it was, it was as quick as it could be basically. So, but again, they the state knew they had a bad case in my opinion there, but. Sometimes they do. And that, but then it's on the state to drop the charges. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you guys have both been covering the case. Um, for, I think I'm outnumbered by defense attorneys, which is fantastic. But <laughs> you guys have both been um, following this case. 
any did the courtroom demeanor strike you any any kind of way here in New Mexico? Because um, I I have thoughts, Peter. I'd love to know yours and then Ian's. Yeah, I mean, I think it's up to the defense attorney to really try to control. I mean, you could say it's up to the judge. That's fine. But once you figure out the judge isn't going to do it, you you've got to say, judge, can we approach and just shut that down? You've got to stay. I thought he stayed pretty cool, calm, and collected. You don't want to. With people like that prosecutor, you don't want to get in the mud because then you both look bad and you start yelling at each other and it starts getting real snarky and condescending back and forth. And you know, my strategy would not to be to kind of get that way, but instead go up to the judge and be like, speaking of objections, totally inappropriate conversations happening in front of the jury, judge. You know, potentially mistrial type of stuff, type of stuff coming out with how this prosecutor's talking. And then she brings some of it up on closing argument as well, knowing that there's these snarky back and forth in front of the jury. So, I mean... I think you got to put that onus on the judge, continue to force it, object to her questions. She led the entire time. I know she's a special prosecutor, so maybe she's more used to cross-examining than it was directing awful. witnesses, but was so putting the awful. answers, putting the answers in the witness's mouth, that's the telltale sign that she's leading him because they're not saying what she wants them to say. So, I mean, I think it was up to the defense attorney to really try to crack down on that. I was wondering where the defense attorney was half the time. Cause you see the, uh you see those massive leading things you see Morrissey was like, it seemed like her trial strategy was to leave all of this stuff for redirect. And I was like, why are you letting this happen? Why aren't you just saying this was not heard on cross? She, this isn't a second direct. This is, you know, you don't get to do this. It, I don't know. Defense was frustrating to me and he got into the mud too. He got yeah. into the mud on those. He was like, I'm looking for the truth. It's like, yeah. Mm, and then it sir. came up in closing. My mouth dropped open. Um, I I know it is a common phrase and I've heard Rob from Law and Lumber say it more recently than I have. But, um, you know, when you're wrestling in the shit with a pig, only the pig enjoys it. Somebody in this trial enjoyed <laughs> wrestling in the shit and it was for the defense attorney to be above it and be like, this is so undignified. My clients on trial, someone died like ew, And to make the prosecutor look like the one who is heavy handed overreaching. And with some, with that tampering charge, I don't think it's hard to paint the government as overreaching in this case. Um, and that's from me. I I've been, you know, a prosecutor most of my life. It felt like an overreach to me. And I think the defense could have painted it that way, but he got right in the mud with her. And then they were bickering back and forth like they were on zoom court. It was, it was wild to see for me. Well, and I think the defense really possibly caused himself some trouble. Cause I assume that one of the things that we didn't get to see was a mistrial application at some point over, you said all this stuff in front of the jury and the judge is going to say, you gave as good as you got. You got several digs back in. You don't get to do that. And then also complain if you're trying to like, he should have been realizing this whole way through that he needs to, Think of two trials, like two proceedings, this one and the appeal. And if he wasn't worrying about his appeal record and was letting himself look bad on that. Um, I'm, have you gone through the interviews where he said he's appealing? Yes. Uh, 10 out of 10. The appellate record in this case is a, a shitballs disaster <laughs> because the judge never ruled on anything. The lawyers just snarked back and forth and then they moved on. I heard the judge rule on objections maybe four times. The sidebars aren't going to illuminate much. Half the time he didn't object. And so what is there left on appeal? Yeah, if you give up your if you give up your objection, you don't get to appeal it. You know, if yeah. you just go, ah, okay, I'll move on. It's like you don't get that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely some stuff that happened pre-trial that are, that's going to come up on appeal, like that cocaine charge we talked about, whether that was even appropriate, yeah. and then it brought in all this other stuff they were able to argue. Um, I, like half the time it was objection leading. I, I don't think that was leading. That was a direct question. It's like, that's not a response to a, an objection. <laughs> and then, yeah, we couldn't even hear the judge. It was kind of like he backed off a lot. I don't know these lawyers personally. Sometimes, you know, when you know high profile lawyers or one lawyer gets intimidated or they don't really want to battle back and forth with them and they just kind of back down after a response. But it was very strange how he missed so many leading question objections that were so obvious when the, when the witness was not giving her the answer she wanted, like when witnesses were like, told yes, she told me what to say yeah. to my answers to my questions. I was like, that's not she, what you want. She was yeah. when the, the, I have thoughts about the lead investigator too. 
Um, but when the lead investigator was testifying and the defense was trying to impeach her, the prosecutor was sitting at the table speaking to the lead investigator saying, you need to read all of that for context. Bam, ma'am, ma'am. Yeah. And the defense didn't say anything and the judge didn't say anything. And it felt like the prosecutor stomped around the courtroom. I was particularly put off by the fact that she saved half her direct examination for redirect. I would have loved to have seen the defense clock her on it once or twice. I mean, like that's outside the scope of cross chat because we're getting into the weeds. The direct examination, the first part, you get to ask all the questions you want. And then cross-examination, you get to ask the leading questions and try to pin people down. And then on redirect, you only get to address cross. She did a whole second direct on redirect. And I was like, what is happening? And no one clocked her on it. Baldwin's lawyers are going to clock her on it. Oh, Baldwin's lawyers are going to wreck her on it. And if she doesn't break that habit, the worst thing that might happen to her is they might save it for a critical witness. And, and so cross. they'll just, they'll let her go out. They'll let her, let her go, let her go. Just get up and like no cross or like minimal, very targeted cross. And she gets up like, now I get second direct. It's like, nope, all that stuff you didn't call, gone. Into the yep. like, and. Yeah, but a lot of times there's leeway because you can recall that witness. I mean, the, the prosecutors get so much leeway with a lot of that. I've, I've had people talk about how. Oh, it's so unfair. I can't remember what trial it was where they could recall the witness and there were issues with that. And I was like, I've had cases where when I was at the prosecutor's office watching like brand new lawyer, they forgot to prove venue and jurisdiction and they could just call another witness after they already rested their case. The judge yeah. is like, yeah, we'll let them reopen to call the cop to say it happened in Pinellas County. It's like, I mean, there's leeway with some of that stuff on redirect. I, I get it. And I think, you know, objecting would force her to do it for future witnesses. And maybe the judge would tell her you can't make a plan like that but she could have always just recalled the lead investigator later to ask her the additional topic areas and different questions. So I have to pop to super chats real quick, Peter, because my client is being slandered. <laughs> um, Law and Lumber said, Emily and Ian, FYI, your client swallowed a whole child sock hole. $360 later, the sock has been removed. Um, I'm going to need OSHA because I feel like I my client- This is a management <laughs> problem. Yes, it's a management problem. <laughs> Everything's like a management problem. Was not put in the- by the way, chat, my client is Law & Lumber's puppy. Um, I, Ian, I'm glad you're co-counsel with me. Uh, well, Peter, if you want to be co-counsel to in representation of Rob's puppy, um, this is- I don't know. I think, I think Rob might might hire me. <laughs> <laughs> he, might, he looks like he needs some help, so I got him. I know he can afford- Peter's it. representing <laughs> management? <laughs> That's right. I'm a, I represent the man. I oh, believe God. Rob was the person in the safety role here, not <laughs> the puppy. Not the client. <laughs> My client needs yummy food, lots of pets. I'm glad Leo is okay. Um, but, you know, this is also, management's responsibility to not leave socks about. You got a puppy. You knew there was going to be some surprise expenses. That that comes with the package. Absolutely. This is why I have cats. They try to unplug my streaming setup, but they generally don't eat the things in my house unless those things are spiders. Um, this is a great question from Frankie's mom. What about Seth Kinney trying to use his phone while testifying? I have no idea why Bulls wasn't getting up and lost my mind. Long, like lost my mind. I lost my mind. Well, um, it it all just fits in. Like Bulls has this trial strategy, which is that he seems to just not be there a lot of the time. Like I don't know where he is, but you watch him in that whole police interview where he's. I called it weekend at Bernie's lawyering during the police interview with Hannah. You did, you did say, well, he was playing candy crush on his phone. That's speculation. He was on his phone quite a lot during the interview with law enforcement. And I imagine both of you as defense attorneys, if you're ever taking your client into the police station to talk, it's because there is already an immunity deal in place and they are talking to law enforcement uh, because of that immunity deal. Or you're I, I don't know why you know how this is going because you know, the investigator or the prosecutor or somebody and trust them as you walk through this. But like, that was crazy. I mean, I know she had already given an interview to me. That makes it even less likely. I'm going to do another one because it's more likely something's going to be inconsistent. So yeah. I, that was wild that, that he did that with her. It was yeah, a very the only thing worse than an interview is two interviews. <laughs> I wonder how much the lead detective played him because it seems like, Bulls was trying to push. Seth Kinney did it. Sarah Zachary did it. They did it. They did it. I wonder how much the lead detective was like, tell me more, Mr. Bulls. Have your client come down and explain to me. Tell me how it's Sarah Zachary's fault. Tell me how it's Dave Hall's fault. Tell me how it's 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 Seth Kinney's fault. 
because we know that Bowles was on the phone with her all the time. And when you're trying to build that relationship with law enforcement, they're going to also use that relationship and it's not going to be to your benefit. So I wonder how much she leaned into, you know what, Seth Kinney is talking to me all the time and telling me this and that and and made Bowles feel comfortable to come in because everybody went into that interview looking like friends. Like Hannah's sitting with her arm back in the chair and Bowles is kicked back with his his um, notebook on his lap and on his phone. They went in there very comfortable. Well, and my favorite thing is that there's a point where he's not comfortable anymore because they're like, oh, this is new information. Bowles goes from like, I am like leaned all the way back to, oh, fuck. I got to pay attention to this. Yep. And he still doesn't think, you know, maybe it's time to leave that. <laughs> Like, hey, because they're very much tr they're trying. You see that they're trying to sell a theory initially. And then later it's like, oh, there's a bunch of extra rounds. Like it wasn't just one mystery round. There was a whole bunch of them around the set. Like that's time to go. <laughs> that's let's get out of there. It is. And I, I have to interject and say, I mean, no disrespect to any other streamers on the Internet. But yes, chat, you are correct. The three streamers with the best hair on YouTube are all in one stream. <laughs> You're accurate. You're accurate. And I said what I said. So, you know, no disrespect, Ben, but that's, that's, that's true. That's true. Thank you, chat, for the observation. Sorry to interrupt again. Somebody in the chat is saying, would I hi hire Mr. Bowles if I was on trial? Um, no. Wait, would you hire Mr. Bowles if you were in trial? Ian's like, I'm Canadian. <laughs> I mean, if he were able to come up here and run a trial, I'd be like, um, thanks. I, I don't know. I might be like, thanks. I think I could do a better job. So I'm curious, defense attorney thoughts. You watch this trial. You're Alec Baldwin's lawyers. What's the oh, I'm loving this. you're having with your client? Uh, two things. One, it's probably, you know how we said you're not going to testify. I want you to watch the cross-examination of that police investigator. And just tell me if you think that he's having fun. You know, this is a smart yep. guy. He's been on the stand hundreds of times in his life. He, you know, he's really good at testifying. Tell me, does it look like he's having fun out there? Because you need to not testify. I don't think that there's, like, Baldwin's already given 12 statements. A 13th isn't going to help him. Oh, and an interview with George Stephanopoulos. That's Our the one that's going to smoke him, I think. Yeah. I did a whole podcast breaking down that interview where he's talking about, like, whatever fanning the fucking hammer and i'm like sir what you didn't say is if it was half cocked quarter cocked fully cocked but he was talking about fanning the hammer and how that's what the cinematographer was asking for the testimony in this trial cleared up that that stephanopoulos interview was not the way shit went down in that church and also fanning is an incredible admission incredible admission because the way you fan a gun you can't fan that gun with your finger off the trigger because if you try to fan it you pull the hammer back and it just stays back. That's how that works. Fanning involves holding the trigger down and repeatedly operating the hammer. So if he's fanning the gun, which is what he said, it means his finger was on the trigger and that contradicts his testimony in a whole bunch of different places. So I... Yeah, you, you started out by saying you're loving this. I was interested in what you were going to say, because I, I don't think this is good for Alec Baldwin that with lunch, two and a half hours for them to convict and to hear jurors say someone died. So we need to have justice. People need to pay because someone died. And the way they're going to describe the entire set as being completely negligent and everybody's yeah. saying Alec Baldwin was the boss. We have him saying, this is why we have two guns loaded. Like, hurry up, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up going off script, firing after cut. I can tell you want to jump in. Go ahead. The the reason why I'm loving what's what's happening is because all of that was was there beforehand, right? All of that was fixed. What Baldwin gets out of this is he gets to watch what the prosecution's case is going to be like. He gets a hint of why they're going after him. And you're going to see things like that theme of he pulled the trigger after cut that he was not supposed to complete a full draw. These are going to be the theories here. He gets to point the finger and say, "You, somebody has to go to jail for this. Hannah. It's Hannah. Yep. Hannah, Hannah, now that she's convicted, I mean, she's appealing, but I mean, so she's still got, she's going to have a, a protection against testifying, but 
you're still going to point the finger for Baldwin unless she testifies for Baldwin. And that's the thing. If I'm Baldwin, I'm like, Hey, Hey, Hannah. Hey, Hannah, maybe you want to come in and, you know, explain this. And that might be available to her. Like, I don't know if it will be, but it might be. The other thing is every further statement for a witness is, is good, right? Every, if you have witnesses against you, you want them to be giving more statements, not less, you know, I've told clients, they're like, oh, the, the complainant came in and gave three statements. That's terrible. I'm like, no, that's great. Because there's no way they said the same thing exactly all three times. And now I'm I'm saying, I want all of those interviews you did. I want all of that, you know, stuff. I And you just build that for your cross-examination. You've already got this testimony. And if you're impeaching, the best standard for evidence to impeach somebody with is didn't you testify to this under oath at this other trial and you said something different now? So this is like all of the bad stuff was going to be bad for Baldwin before this trial happened. But yeah, this but I think, trial helps him. I think the seeing how it was presented and how the entire set was described and displayed to the jury was pretty effective in that the whole thing was bad. Everybody was bad. You can point the finger at literally yeah. everybody throughout the whole process. The only good thing I felt for Alec Baldwin throughout the trial was the state's um, armor or firearms expert saying like, I don't think the actors have to check. If they want to make themselves feel warm and fuzzy, they can do it, yeah. but I don't expect them to check. That's my job. So, I mean, using some things like that, I think could help him. But at the end of the day, I think it's frankly an easier argument that the person holding the gun is responsible. And you, the first rule of firearm safety, you never point the gun at something you don't want to shoot. I mean, to me, that's, I, I wouldn't be any more excited after this trial if I was Baldwin's team. Um, frankly, two and a half hours for this quick of a verdict. I, I would think I'd be less confident, if anything. The, the other thing, though, is Baldwin would have a pretty good case for, I didn't know what I was doing. The armorer said all of this stuff was fine. The armorer had no problem with it. Except but, for his statements. But for his statements. But for his statements where he brags about how much he knows, about yeah. how unsafe it is, and the video clip of him, like, there's a video clip out there where he's got the gun, he's like, get further back, I don't want to pull the trigger with you this close, and I'm going, okay, that's going to be fun when that comes up at your trial. <laughs> Yeah, so. I think I think they're going to make it look bad for him. I think we'll probably see more of those clips and how he's speaking yeah. to people and how he's rushing people and how he's creating an unsafe environment. I think they're going to pile on a lot more than just he was the last one holding the gun and he must have pulled the trigger. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see. I think it is going to be a little bit of a different trial. I don't think it's going to be exactly the same. Oh, it's going to be different for sure. Soon. But it's going to well, be a lot of Alec Baldwin's an asshole when that, the trials... Was... Yeah, when the trial could be literally... You never point the gun at someone. You pointed the gun, you pulled the trigger. That should be the trial. I don't think the prosecutor is going to be able to rein it in. We are going to see lots of clips of him on set being like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, but I I don't know how much they'll lean into the producer theory. I think the involuntary manslaughter with the um, negligent use of the firearm is the strongest, the strongest theory for Baldwin, truly. Uh, but it's going to be a very, very full trial. This trial was not that full in the gallery. There was not a lot of media there. Um, there were some friends of Helena Hutchins there, some family of the defendant, but the Baldwin trial is going to be a media circus like I think um, the Murdoch trial will be. I think that the, the producer stuff and the clips for Baldwin will probably come in because Baldwin's going to point the finger at Hannah and Zachary and Seth Kenny yeah. or whoever and Dave Hall. Have to show that even if you think those people screwed up, he's the producer, he's the boss, he's pushing everybody. Dave Hall's handed me the gun, told yeah. me it was fine. Mm -hmm. I was trusting him, but the script doesn't say the script doesn't say point the gun it goes rogue. So he was going rogue. Um, for those of you asking oh. what is Baldwin charged with involuntary manslaughter, just like Hannah, two theories, unlawful act, lawful act. I described those in the Emily show podcast like two weeks ago. If you want the, breakdown of that we have one more friend joining us so hold that thought runkle alita make sure you push the echo cancellation and stream yard before you <laughs> perfect time I have to leave, but i want to say hi before I peter leave. don't leave yet i want your final thoughts as alita pops on okay so 
You've got the echo cancellation. Perfect. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. We're going to let Peter give Hi. his final thoughts. Good to see you. All right. Oh. Good to see you too. High five, Peter, uh, <laughs> on your way out. <laughs> Peter, final <laughs> thoughts. What do you think of the verdict? What do you think for Baldwin? We just talked about that. Where can people find you and what you're covering next? Yes, it's compound. Nobody object. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I think the jury got it right at the end of the day. I think there was enough evidence for the involuntary manslaughter charge, negligence everywhere. And I think they did a good job proving what her duty was. And that was kind of the hard part is what's the armor's duty? Did she blow it? Yes. And that's how we got here. I also think it was the right call for a not guilty verdict on the tampering charges. I think that yeah. might be an appellate issue. I don't even know how they charge it based off one person saying, yeah, this was probably cocaine um, and nobody else doing anything to confirm it. But I mean, I think it was interesting. I think the jury did their job and I respect the jury's verdict as always, but this one I can see how they got there pretty easily. Um, next thing I'm covering is the James Crumbly trial, Oxford school shooter dad. They just finished picking the jury and they're starting tomorrow. So that'll be interesting to jump on that one and kind of see how that goes. Another involuntary manslaughter where negligence causes death. And they got to point to who actually was the person's actions that resulted in the death. So it's going to be interesting to follow that as well. You can find me lawyer, you know, on YouTube and everywhere else. Appreciate you having me on. Good to see you guys as well. Have fun. I'm out of here. Good to see you, Peter. Thank you. See you, Peter. Check them out. Fantastic coverage. Absolutely so. great coverage. And a lot of you have asked if I'm covering the Crumbly case. I am not covering the Crumbly case. Um, I still have to send my kids to school every morning, so I do not cover school shooter cases because there's not enough like anxiety medication in the world for me to do that. Um, Alina, welcome. Now the chat has correctly said, now we have all the best hair. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Now we have all the best hair. Rico, go ahead and hit echo cancellation before I bring you into the stream. And I'm going to have you and Alita both um, go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick. It's in the stream yard end. And then give me a thumbs up when the echo cancellations hit. And I'll bring you right on. Thumbs up from Rick Hogue. Rick Hogue, it's so good to see you on stream. Oh, thank you. Yes. I did, I did hear the hair comments earlier and I thought you needed at least a representative of the B team. So did you take your hat <laughs> off so that we could see your glorious hair? Because you're not in a hat. No, actually, today was a stylist day, you know, because I'm big time. So you are big. <laughs> uh, I was uh, recording a different show for a different channel and saw you guys talking and you were nice enough to invite me and thought I should pop on because I think this was an interesting case. And I only saw two minutes of it, really. I Fair popped enough. onto Alita's stream one day. I popped onto your stream one day, Emily. Ian, okay. I don't think I caught any of your recaps, but I did see you going ridiculously into the night. So oh, I... Uh... Ian doesn't sleep. I've been enjoying. Well, I'm not. People have said, "Are you covering Crumbly?" And I'm like, I need to take a little bit of recap time off because I will die. Um, <laughs> I will die. I don't know how y'all do it, honestly. But um, I, I give up sleep one. and recreation. <laughs> I miss. I miss. I miss being a trial attorney sometimes, and I just live on on the adrenaline of other people's trials. Alita, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the stream and let them know where your channel is. You've been covering this trial too. Yes. So go ahead. And yes. Say hi. So, so I'm, if you don't know me, my name is Alita. I run the channel Legal Bites. Um, and I have been, yeah, as Emily said, I've been streaming this, this trial as well from gavel to gavel. Um, so that was, that was a bit of a wild ride at times. Um, for sure. I mean, I know we've, we, we've, we've chatted behind the scenes a little bit about, um, uh, you know, the, the some of the nonsense, the lawyers, <laughs> the, pigeon the lawyers, <laughs> the cell phones being used by witnesses on the stand, the, the guns being pointed at the judge. Like what? This trial had everything. <laughs> yep. I just, I keep thinking back to that moment. And I'm just thinking like at the point where I was going and seeing the, um, you know, my expert point a gun at the judge, I would have just been like, um, no questions for this witness. You just sit down, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, Rick, sir, you're you're done. Goodbye. I'm sorry to cut you <laughs> off again. I want to make sure Rick gets introduced so I don't forget. Rick, sorry, go ahead and introduce deficit. yourself to the chat. I know we all know each other, but not <laughs> all of the new law nerds know, know all of the lore in the expanded lawyer universe. Um, so, Rick, go ahead and introduce yourself. Also, we're going to put the poll for your voting up in the description and for everybody's channels. So don't worry about that. But Rick, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, yourself. thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Rick Hogue. I have a little YouTube channel as well, Hogue Law, where we talk about 
business stuff because I am not a litigator. Uh, and so I talk about transactions, business, and news articles related to pop culture, video games primarily, movies and television, so that y'all can get a business lawyer's perspective on some of these things and why they're happening the way they do. So that's what I do. I got to know these crazy cats over the course of a number of trials over the past few years. And yes, the the poll that Emily was so graciously mentioning is for uh, what is a stroke award because I had a stroke and maybe it's the best stroke. I don't know. Uh, no, it's uh, it's an award for doing something with that medical condition. And I put together a video series. You did a speed run of stroke recovery yes. that rivals yeah. anything a Minecraft YouTuber has ever fucking done. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Recovery was absolutely inspiring. And you made an awareness series that not just you and your wife brought a lot of awareness to people of symptoms of stroke that they might not have been paying attention to. And it is a huge, huge thing. And it's hard to share a vulnerable recovery. I didn't talk about my college shoulder industry injury, a shoulder industry for like 15 years outside of therapy because I couldn't do it. It's incredibly, incredibly brave. And we love you. And Hangouts and Headlines is one of my favorite things because you definitely point out the bullshit going on in a, in a, a lot of the articles that you cover. Well, and you may also have saved the life of one of my um, frequent commenters. There's a guy who's now recovering from a stroke who indicated... Yeah part of how I knew I was having a stroke was Rick. And I was like, that is cool. I, so no, you've done excellent work and like you may literally have saved lives. So props, I don't think man. may, I think probably have saved lives. Absolutely. Awareness is a huge thing. And that's why I think Hogue should win. So you guys <laughs> hold on. I get to do the legally blonde Alita. Do you want to do vote for Hogue with me? We can do it. <laughs> vote for Hogue. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I love it. <laughs> I can't I can't invite Runkle to do it with me. He hasn't seen Legally Blonde yet. But it's we have a, a cadre of, of lawyers that stream here on the internet to talk about this case. Uh, Alita, what was your favorite moment from this trial of all of it? My favorite moment. Oh, gosh. I haven't stopped to think about that. I might need a second to think it's about it. It's been so busy. It's been so busy. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's funny because it's a lot easier for me to point out like the the parts that I hated, <laughs> right? Like the the like the the um my so my chat started to to use this mantra sidebars not snidebars um, after <laughs> after judge finally cracked down on the two attorneys because um, because of their their snide bars in front of the jury, um, and it, it's 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 been a beautiful thing. Um, so that's that's one of my highlights. It was some of the memes that kind of have have come out of this. Um, but uh, yeah, that's I gave you coffee. Don't make me turn this trial around. <laughs> yes. Was a first for me. The judge was appalled. She's like, "But I let you have coffee so that you would behave, and now you're doing this." It. She was horrified by them. They they shouldn't have been trusted with caffeine. <laughs> they it was like been. giving children caffeine and just watching them go. Um, and in the chat said I had a stroke at 37, and I noticed uh for Hogue post-stroke patient unite. Uh a stroke nice. took my dad at 92. Hogue's recovery is amazing. amazing. Lots and lots and lots of love for all of you in the chat. Right. And now everybody has said the hair squad is complete. Alita does have fantastic hair. It's, Thank you. It's absolutely true. Um, my the, secret is laziness. The I just I, I haven't I haven't cut it in maybe two years, I think. So that's that's it. That's that's the secret. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend I'm adding to the hair game here, but <laughs> <laughs> um Rick, you've been seeing us chatting not just in in our chat, but also on the internet about this trial. The courtroom decorum was absolutely horrendous here. <laughs> Have you been surprised hearing us retell about the courtroom decorum in this case? Yes, I think all of you reacted to the apparently gun swinging expert bandit in the courtroom at pretty much the same time. So from afar, I get to see that on Twitter and then say, maybe I should check in. And some of the admonitions from the judge also come across on social media. And certainly my reactions were, what is happening over there? Because I did check in a couple of times. I checked in for uh, Walter White, the Dolly Man. 
I, I saw that. <laughs> so much. Um, I, it's I, like I, tonight we cook. It's, 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 indeed, that was right? yelling. Let him cook <laughs> when they were trying to roast him on on cross examination. The chat was like, "Let him cook," because he was a great witness. He was mad too. Sorry to cut yeah. you off, Rick. No, not at all. And so it, it was interesting to watch it from afar because one of the reasons I almost didn't come on tonight because, as I said, you were gracious enough to invite me, is that I don't have this minute to minute understanding of of what was occurring. I watched the verdict come in on Alita's channel when it came in, uh, but I didn't know which way that we're going to go with this. I thought that both sides had really painted a picture of a messy set uh, and obviously someone died, but the law isn't entirely clear as to where that buck should stop. It's really in the hands of those 12 people. So I didn't know which way they were going to go. And then by the time that verdict happens in for a lawyer, what seems to be instantaneously, I think what I tweeted out after the verdict was seems like New Mexico might be in the incarcerating Hollywood business uh, right now. So I, I don't know how that's going to go for Alec Baldwin, but I suspect he's a little more scared tonight than he was before this all happened. I imagine we're going to see an increase in pretrial litigation with Baldwin based on the shenanigans we saw in this trial. And I think they're going to try to narrow things down in motions in limine. I imagine we are going to see a fleet of New York City lawyers, um, which the prosecution has derided every time she has a chance. She's like, these New York City lawyers doing this, these New York City lawyers doing that. Oh, just I would just everyone at every possible chance. I'd probably have a motion <laughs> limit in limine just to be like the words New York City shall not escape the prosecutor's mouth. Absolutely. Um, no reference to where defense counsel is from or practices. Um, yeah. Did did you also see the tremendous own goal that Bowles managed to? Did you look at the juror interview? I did mm -hmm. see the juror interview. Did you catch that he works at Los Alamos? Yeah, the nuclear facility. I was like, you let this guy on your jury? He also what has a CDL. Hell? He also has a commercial driver's license. Yes. I was, was like, like, this guy is the worst case scenario for your jury. He's like, safety is important to my job. I literally work at a nuclear plant. And yeah. I am I understand the role of like the safety person who is the person who can shut down everything and has to I was like, oh my God, no, why? Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate that he also said, you know, Baldwin will have his day in court. The prosecution hit that in closing, and you heard this juror echoing that in his interview. Baldwin will have his day in court. It's a good thing the prosecutor said it because otherwise they wouldn't have have uh have gotten to it so legal vice yeah. is good to see you in the chat <laughs> <laughs> gorilla grip we still haven't learned what the gorilla grip was i was sent a theory um and i'm going to say it just to see if i can oh. Hogue, because hogue was there for the um hashtag would that, that is <laughs> i looked it up <laughs> well i didn't look it up i got emails from people this was the speculation and then i want to hear what you have to say because this channel um is already thoroughly demonetized today anyway so <laughs> the, the theories i got were that hannah might have been dating someone on set that was in fact a grip who was maybe a uh a really endowed gentleman and so he was the gorilla grip and she was the pussy pal and that is why her phone was named gorilla grip pussy pal because hogue when the attorneys failed to redact the phone numbers out of the evidence they put oh on the my God. read in court for everyone, the prosecutor was reading the defense attorney's personal phone number to the record. Nobody fucking objected. Oh my God, yeah. The phone number or the phone name was on the bottom of all those text messages and the defendant's phone name was Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. But um, apparently Runkle Googled. <laughs> I did not Google. So Just ask um, the AI. Yeah, if you're mean? going to end up in court, make sure your phone name is either appropriately ridiculous or appropriate for it. Yeah. I'm afraid so, you guys would be bored with mine. It's just Hoglaw. <laughs> I, I think mine I is just mine like Android phone. <laughs> because I don't want people to try to like I when I'm doing like um airdropping and stuff, you have to know who I am to know it's my phone. It's 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 hidden. It's a pseudonym. I'm probably going to name mine something <laughs> like it's I've got an Android phone. I'm probably going to name it something like, you know, iPhone. And then that way, if it ever shows up in a document drop, it'll be like, doesn't this say it's an iPhone, though? 
we can cross examine on that point. <laughs> I want to know if you looked it up. I did. There's actually yeah. a know, know your meme entry for it. Um, because okay. somebody put it in a song and it just refers. So the gr gorilla grip pussy or gorilla grip coochie apparently just refers to um, tightness, essentially. Uh, the cool. line, um, there was apparently a Facebook meme, um, and I'm reading off the page here, um, which was, um, it basically says, when she sneezes and her coochie girl, you like a, or uh, grips you like a gorilla fist. <laughs> so... I think she is sort of boasting in her description of the phone. That, I'm not mad at it though. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it though. It's funny. Like it, you gotta see. It's... You never know what you're gonna get when you come here. I'm changing my <laughs> phone name. Gat. That's what I'm gonna do. If we're boasting in phone names, I'm changing. I'm changing it to Gat. That's what I'm doing. My child will die. Um, everybody's like, it's too. It's TMI. This is the channel where we have read about Linda's tight little clam. So. <laughs> um, that's Runkle's fault because of his clam shorts. So, um, <laughs> yes, we've gotten to TMI late in the day, but that's okay. We've got a bunch of lawyers. Who we're going to tell some jokes. I'm going to pull up some questions if you guys don't mind, sure, because sure. I am going to have to scoot in about 10 minutes, um, A, to see my family and B, to do the things. Um, so we're going to ask some questions real quick. A snake named Mitchie said, she's not a flight risk, not a threat to anyone based on the facts in the case. It wasn't a violent crime I mean, it wasn't an intentional crime. Why was she remanded? My heart hurts for that. Thoughts, Ian, and then Alita and Rick? I don't think she, I don't think there was a point to remanding her. I think that they just did it out of condemnation out of rather than an actual risk. I think that if the defense had actually come to play on that particular issue, which they clearly did not because he's reading it off his freaking phone. I'm sorry. I am prepping for these kinds of submissions the night like, I know I'm finished that day. I'm coming in. I've got submissions prepped for that, right? My client needs to stay out of custody. I'm not reading it off my phone. Could they have been surprised like, that they got a verdict that day? Yes, but you should have been ready. You, you should, should be ready that the jury for all literally just... You should be ready that the jury doesn't even make it out of the room. <laughs> like, kind of thing. And But they really needed to argue. She's not a flight risk and go into detail. And she's not a risk to anyone else, notwithstanding that this is a death file. There is no risk to anyone else. She's on conditions yep. that say she can't have guns. There's no indication that she's breached those conditions. No one is going to let her onto a film set. So you can put conditions in that she stay in New Mexico, that yeah. she doesn't go back to Arizona. She can't leave the state. She she had a personal weapon you could have made her turn over her personal weapon. She had a personal weapon because of all the death threats and the court allowed that to happen. I yes. think there were things that could have been done to not remand her. I just wonder if she'll be remanded. She has the option of getting probation time served at the end of this case. I don't know if the remand indicates that the judge will sentence her to up to 18 months in custody, but the defense barely argued to keep her out of remand. The defense could have said, Your Honor, we'd like to be heard. Can we take a moment we yeah. would like to be heard on this um, and didn't. It just happened very, very quickly at the end of the day. And a lot of people in the chat felt really kind of gross about it. They're like, yeah, she should be prosecuted, but the remand feels heavy handed. The other yeah. thing is if you want to win that, you don't just say, I think she could be released on conditions. You come in with a proposal. Like when I'm doing a bail hearing, it's always like, Okay, we propose that she be released on the you know this amount of money, and I don't know if this is a cash situation or whatever in their jurisdiction, but you know, with conditions that she not possess a weapon, she not leave the state of. I mean, they could have said you don't even leave the city, yeah, right. You know, she's not going to leave the city until this gets done. She's not, you know, she will check in with a supervisor. She will all of this stuff just so that you know she's not going anywhere. Make the pitch sell it to the court as this is the plan and that they can say, yeah, we're doing that thing. And if the Not court just was like really worried, they could have put her on an anklet. Um, yeah. They could have put her on an ankle bonder. Can she bond out? No, she's remanded till sentencing. She cannot bond out. She was out and her lawyer did not fight to keep her out, which I don't know this judge. I don't know this jurisdiction, 
but he was like, Your Honor, per civil code, um, uh, she can stay out with conditions. Yeah. It reminded me of when he tried to, on cross-examination, he tried to impeach with something on his phone at one point. I can't remember. It was during during the during the, the, the state's case in chief. I can't remember which witness it was, but he tried to go up like showing his phone. And I was like, what are you, yeah. what are you doing? And Just be prepared. I, be, be prepared can, for your cross. I can tell you, I'm an asshole. If somebody goes and is trying to impeach with something on their phone, I'm like, um, I move that we make that an exhibit. Yep. <laughs> And they're like, what? The phone. No, no, your phone is now an exhibit because you just used know. it in this trial. Yep, it's um, an appellate exhibit. I would do the exact same thing, Runkle. You and I would have been petty buddies in court together. It would have been an absolute delight. But one of the things that the DA's office, they always said is, don't walk up to the witness with that computer. That computer is now part of the appellate record. Your computer is not evidence. If you yeah. need to use digital evidence, you have an evidence computer that then goes back with the court. You don't use your purse. These attorneys walking up to the stand with their personal computers was bananas to me um yeah it was absolutely absolutely wild this trial and i i'm not surprised with the verdict was surprised with the remand truly and people keep saying that fanny uh willis the da in in uh georgia's phone was also named gorilla grip pussy pal which i kept thinking was a joke but it came up in that in those hearings i i just don't understand interesting Wait, you mean Maybe to tell me there a, are multiple phones with that name? There are multiple <laughs> phones apparently with that name. I don't know why. But I used to have a laptop that I loved. I like there's just had... some cultural <laughs> reference that I'm just not. <laughs> I'm like so independent of. Exactly. Well, the thing about Sorry, it is, ahead. right? It's it's odd to me that there are multiples with that name, but also that there must be so many with that name that they would both appear in virtually simultaneous trial settings. Yeah. Seems yeah. unlikely. Very. The other Eric. thing is that there were like TikTok things about like, you know, kegels to music and that kind of thing. Um, so it could have been that this is like a this thing. Is the thing you use to practice is her phone. Um, I don't understand TikTok, man. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever get me on TikTok. <laughs> I, I feel old to say I'm like, if it's a TikTok meme, I just don't get it um which is which is what it is Chat, but the, uh, I, the funny ahead. thing about the exhibit thing i used to have a laptop that i loved up until it died but it had a the hard drive was ejectable and you could just swap new hard drives in and so at one point the prosecution because i had to do the thing with here's my evidence laptop and they're like and that laptop goes into evidence and i'm just like Shlup, there you go there's the hard drive and they're like and I could just see the sadness on their face as that grand moment went away. Absolutely. It's 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 just been wild. Chat, um, I have to let you guys know that I have to depart shortly um, because it is dinner time and we have things. Uh, Runkle, you're going to go first. I want you to let the folks know what you are covering next and where to find you before I wrap up and say goodbye. Um, I've got some interesting things that I'm trying to run down on the Jeanette Braun slash Janet Braun story. Um, so I'm doing some investigative reporting on that, but in the short term, I'm doing, I've got one more recap of the rest trial. So I'm going to be talking about what happened today, talk about the verdict, talk about what this means for Baldwin and all of that is happening in half an hour on the, uh, Brooklyn, the Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my go, goodness. go do the things you'll find him at runkle the bailey alita what are you covering next and where can where can people find you so you can you can find me on my channel legal bites uh the next thing i'm probably going to be covering is the james crumbly trial i'm not going to be streaming it gavel to gavel like i did this one because i'm not in the united states and so it is very very early in the morning now. <laughs> uh, so I would like to get on, get back onto like a somewhat regular schedule so that I don't have to like sleep in a different, like sleep in the guest room to like not wake up Mr. Bites um, when, when I'm going to bed. Um, you know, at some point it would be nice to be more than ships passing in the night. Um, so anyway, so probably more like recaps along those lines. Um, but James Crumbly is one that's, that's, I'm, I'm curious about. I know that the Jennifer Crumbly trial was bananas. Um, so that one should be, should be interesting too. And then more stuff I'm sure is going to come up as, as it does. Yeah. Hope, where can they find you? What are we covering? And I've put the link in the description to go vote for Hogue. Oh, thank you. Yes. Your votes are appreciated. I'm not used to pitching for 
medical awards. So please do vote. There are a lot of good nominees there. You can check those out as well. If you'd prefer to vote for someone that's not me, really anything that votes your vote is okay. Uh, on my neck of the woods at Hoglaw, youtube.com slash Hoglaw or Twitter X, whatever we're calling it these days okay. at Hoglaw, I'm still covering transactions and business questions. So we've got a lot of tumult in the video game space. We've got a lot of layoffs. We've got a lot of buyouts. We've got some big companies buying out their intellectual property from other big companies. All sorts of things that I find interesting that hopefully I can make interesting to you if you come by and check out the videos. Uh, and we'll be doing some hangouts and headlines as well. Not for the rest of this week because I am traveling. We're having a bit of a family trip, That's which exciting. is nice. A nice little excursion for the Hogue family. Uh, but after that, I'll be back doing these kinds of things, including talking about probably um, Remedy buying their control IP. I might go over the, the Trump Supreme Court decision because I'm a glutton for punishment and those comments are always fun. Uh, so <laughs> I think I think we can elucidate certain aspects of that decision that I've seen perhaps a little bit wrongly reported. Might do that as a special video, might do that as a hangout and headlines. You're telling me that that the media's gotten legal legal holdings wrong. Hogue, oh, I'm shocked. shocked. I think <laughs> I think when you put out a per curiam opinion from the whole court and then you have two concurrences that are separate, you're really asking a lot of the journalists, even those that, that follow the law. True. It is true. And what I love about your coverage when you cover anything and this whole chat when they cover, we're going to break down the law and let you know what we think about it. Hogue very much operates on reasonable minds can differ. It's like, I'm not going to tell you what to think. I'm just going to tell you what the court said and did. And then you can decide what to think, and which is what I love about all of your coverage. It's like, let's just demystify the law a little bit in our own little ways with our own little gifts. And that's very important. Chat, I am going to have to roll. Um, I'm sorry if I did not get to everybody's super chats. You guys have been incredibly generous. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., instead of going live, I am dropping the podcast episode about VPR. We have an update on Tom and Ariana suing for essentially equitable division of the assets. Their 10-year partners live together. They own their property in common. Um, and they Wait, are These are the guys up. that you told me about yes. the other day, like a couple That's months theory. ago. They are breaking up and the house needs to be sold and she won't sell it to him and each of them own half. So that is, is a part of the lawsuit. But the other part is the mistress in the Scandaval affair Rachel Raquel is suing Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval for invasion of prop, prop, privacy and revenge porn. So those wow. two lawsuits, yeah, I've not seen the mistress in the affair spice. sue the um the couple uh who she who broke up due to the affair. So if you are reality show fans or not, there's some very interesting law happening in that civil revenge porn invasion of privacy lawsuit that's dropping tomorrow at 11. You will know that if you're signed up for the Law Nerd app, it will keep you in the loop. That's how all of you got here today for me rushing home from picking up my kid from band to cover this verdict. Friends, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to say goodbye backstage. We're going to roll the outro and I will see Law Nerds. I will be in the chat with you tomorrow. We're back to the Bravo sphere uh, and it's needed. You can stay up to date <laughs> with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd. Nerd.